When communicating science, how your report is written is nearly as important as the scientific content. If reviewers or readers are unable to follow what you did, or can't see the logic of your hypotheses, or don't understand your conclusions, they won't consider it good science. It's your job as a writer to ensure that anyone reading your report comes away with a clear impression of the research. Scientific papers are made easier to read by all following a similar structure. The exact order and titles of the sections varies between journals, as does the length of the papers, but the basic format is the same. An abstract, an introduction, a method section, a results section, and a discussion. Scientific papers start with an abstract, which is a short summary containing all the basic information a reader would want to know. Abstracts will include the hypothesis, the study species, a brief description of the methods, and the main conclusions of the paper. Abstracts allow scientists to more easily keep up with new findings and decide which papers to read in detail. Far too many papers are published for scientists to read all of them fully, so the entire paper is usually only read by those with a specific interest in the topic and how the research was done. The first section of the main paper is the introduction, which lays out the rationale for the research in the context of existing work. It'll include some background on the topic and what work has already been done on it. It'll also include the research hypothesis and predictions. The methods section describes how the research was done. For animal behavior, this means the study species, research site, and ethical considerations, as well as the experimental design, how the data were collected, and the statistical methods. The results section describes what was found including all the associated statistical information, figures, tables, and plots. Results are not interpreted or discussed here, just clearly stated. Results sections generally follow the same order as the methods to make referring between the sections easier. The final main section is the discussion. In this section, the authors discuss whether their results support their hypotheses and put their findings in the context of prior work. They may also point out any limitations or alternative explanations of their research and suggest directions for future work. After the discussion comes a full bibliography of all the studies mentioned earlier in the paper. Within the paper, other studies are abbreviated either to numbers or short citations, so the bibliography is needed for readers to be able to find a cited study. Acknowledgements of those that helped with the research or provided funding are also listed after the discussion. Some papers may also include supplementary data, figures, or other material that is not crucial to the paper but is of interest to some readers. When writing a scientific report, even one not for publication, it's wise to stick to this general format. It clearly lays out the research process in a way that is easily understood and familiar to those who read the primary literature. In addition to good overall structure, scientific writing also follows a particular style within each section. Sections are divided into paragraphs, which each have one key point or argument to make. The first sentence of each paragraph states this point clearly to help make the section as a whole easier to follow. The following sentences in the paragraph justify the initial statement, clarify it, provide further detail, or add caveats. If possible, the last sentence should also guide the reader into the next paragraph. Paragraphs should always be at least two sentences long and should rarely be longer than five or six sentences. Our aim in scientific writing is to be as clear and concise as possible to help get the message across. Remember that many scientists are not native English speakers. Use precise words, avoid slang, and don't use long or obscure words if short ones will do. Use the past tense to refer to your work in all sections. Finally, it can be tempting to copy particularly well-written statements from other works. If you do this, then the copied text must be in quotes. It is usually better to rephrase statements from other works so they fit better into your text. Either way, the source of the statement or idea should be clearly cited. Don't forget you can also plagiarize yourself. Don't just copy verbatim from your previous reports. Instead, rephrase and cite as you would with any other source. There are many excellent articles and courses online about scientific writing, and I encourage you to make use of them. But as with many things, there's really no substitute for practice. Writing clearly and succinctly is a skill that takes a long time to develop, but anyone can learn it.